read this to you this morning. During a family holiday to Jerusalem, George's mother-in-law died. With her death certificate in hand, George went to the consulate office to make arrangements to send the body back home for a proper burial. The consulate, after hearing of the death of the mother-in-law, told George that sending a body overseas for burial is very, very expensive, and it could cost upwards of $5,000. He said in most cases, the person responsible for the remains normally decide to bury the body in Jerusalem as it costs only $150. George thought about his options for some time before answering. I don't care how much it will cost to send the body back. That's what I want to do. Impressed with his dedication, the consulate said, you must have really loved your mother-in-law, considering the difference in price. No, it's not that, said George. You see, I know of a case years ago of a person that was buried here in Jerusalem, and on the third day, they rose again. I just can't take that chance. The story we began today is about Ruth and her mother-in-law, whom she loved very, very much, as we'll find out as we go along, um, looking at the book of Ruth. Chapter 1 is all about the build-up to Ruth's arrival in Israel, in the Promised Land, with her mother-in-law, Naomi. Now, Ruth was not an Israelite. She was a Moabite. She was uh, a foreigner. Uh, in fact, she would, be, she would be described as an alien by the Israelites, an alien. Uh, but she ends up going back to Israel with, with Naomi and being welcomed, being accepted, being embraced, and even being really blessed in the land. Um, so blessed that she will eventually get married in Israel. She will have a child named, a son named Obed, who would be the grandfather of King David. So Ruth, this Moabite girl, became very blessed in the land of Israel. But how does she end up there? And we saw a bit of the story. Uh, we heard the story read to us um, this morning. Thanks, James. Chapter 1 is about Naomi leaving Israel, going on this journey to Moab, settling there for a while, and then returning home with her daughter-in-law, Ruth. Ruth uh, um, uh, sort of comes into the story more in chapter 2 and and, uh, 3 and 4. Chapter 1 is about Naomi's journey. And Naomi would describe what happened to her um, in a sentence in verse 21. Just one phrase really summarises her journey um, uh, out of Israel back again. She says this, and we're going to look at this verse, verse 21. If you've got your Bibles, book of Ruth, it comes after there's there's, uh, Joshua, then Judges, then Ruth, if you want to to look at it in your Bible this morning. So Ruth, chapter 1, verse 21, um, and we're just going to dig into this, um, break this verse down this morning as we begin looking at the series. And this is Naomi speaking after being away from the promised land for several years. She says this on her return. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. And so we're going to start just looking at this verse. And the first three words are key. It says, I went away. This is Naomi saying, she went away. Why is that such a big deal? Because what it's saying is that Naomi left the promised land. She walked away from the inheritance that was given to her and her ancestors uh, before her. This land was God's blessing. It was the inheritance. It was the promised land. And here is Naomi stepping out of that, walking away from it, moving away from the place where God had planted her, had placed her and her family. And that's a big deal. She went away. And, uh, and we asked the question, you know, why would she do that? Why would she go? Look, this is, this is, there's a map here just so we know, have a picture of uh, what's going on. So they left. She went away from Israel, crossed the Jordan, into the land of Moab. And so we've got to ask the question, why would she do that? Well, the reason is because in verse 1, as we heard, there was a famine in Israel. There's a famine in the land. Things, uh, food was becoming scarce. It was becoming... Uh, difficult for people in the land of Israel. So Naomi, uh, together with her her husband Elimelech, decide to look elsewhere, to look outside the promised land for a place where they might settle while this famine is going on. 
they look to Moab of all places. Remember Moab? If you know the story of the Israelites, Moab was where they camped on the east of the Jordan before, you know, under the leadership of Moses and then Joshua, before they crossed into the promised land, they were camped in Moab. And now here is Naomi and her husband and they're going back to Moab, going back to the place that God led them out of into the promised land because there was a famine there. And so I imagine, you know, husband and wife, they would have sat down and, and talked this over. Naomi, Elimelech, you know, what are we going to do? Um, what should we do in this moment? And they decided together, let's, let's go to Moab with their two sons, Malon and Kilian. This idea that the grass is greener on the other side. If we can, if we can just get out of Israel into Moab, then things will be okay. Then, then it'll work out fine. We just need to get to Moab. This was the desire of their heart. And so they, first thing, Naomi says, I went away. I went away. Here's the thing. The next word is key. The next word, I went away full. Naomi didn't just go away. She went away full. And that's a, that's a key word in the story because that word full in the Hebrew means satisfied with abundance, overflowing. They left the promised land overflowing with more than enough. They were full. Family life was good. Married with two sons. They were considered well off in the land. They had plenty. They did not need to leave. They did not need to leave Israel. There were some in the land who would struggle through this famine. But Naomi and her family, they wouldn't. They had plenty. They were considered well off in the land. Some, um, some of the Jewish writers even say that that uh, they would blame Naomi for the suffering of those who stayed in Israel through this famine. They say that, that Naomi and her family leaving put extra pressure on those who stayed in the land because they could have stayed there and out of their overflow, out of their abundance, they could have helped those in need through this famine. One writer, uh, one comment says this, um, that Naomi showed an unwillingness to relieve the poor that came to them in their distress. So this was the picture. They were in, the, in Israel. They had plenty. They had an abundance. They had more than enough to survive. You know, the reality was is that they had the potential to survive this famine and come out okay and also help others around them. Yet here they are leaving Israel for the, promise, uh, for, for the land of Moab. They did not have to go. Instead, here they are leaving. They're walking away when they could have stayed and helped others. Why? Because they thought the grass was greener in Moab. They were full, satisfied, in abundance, overflowing. I want to give just three observations um, at this moment. There's, the first observation is there's no record of anyone else leaving. There's no record of this sort of like, you know, okay, here's, here's Naomi and Elimelech and the family leaving. There's not this other thing, oh, you know, we better go too. We've got to, we've got to get out of Israel. Let's, let's leave as well. There's no record of anyone else leaving. Just these guys. Second observation is that, that had they sat down before they left and got some wise counsel, some godly advice from the elders in the land, they would have most likely told them not to leave. Stay in the land. This is where God has placed you. This is the promised land. This is his inheritance for you and your family. This is where his presence dwells. You'll be protected in the land. That would have been the advice. Trust God for what is ahead. The third observation is that when Naomi eventually does return, you'll notice in the story, um, is that everyone is excited to see her. Everyone's still there. They managed to get through it okay. In fact, some of them are really doing well. Guys like Boaz, who will feature in the story a little later on, is doing really well in the land. So when Naomi arrives back, everyone's excited and they're still doing okay. What's the point? They didn't have to go. They didn't have to leave. But while they were full, it says, I went away full. Naomi and Elimelech leave Israel. It says, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. 
the word empty. Now, full means overflowing and abundance, satisfied. This word is the opposite. Arriving home, empty. It's a tragic story. We heard it uh, read to us this morning. The moment that uh, Naomi arrives in Moab, things begin to be stripped away. There's incredible loss. The first thing that happens, well, she, she will lose her husband. Her husband will die. Now, you think here she is now without her husband, widowed, and with these two boys that she's trying to raise in Moab. You'll think in this moment she might want to go home. But no, she stays in Moab and raises her two boys. And eventually they will get married to Moabite girls, Orpah and Ruth. And, um, and then after the marriages, after the weddings, both the sons die. So it's the loss of her husband. Now, here's the picture she, for Naomi. She, she arrives in Moab, loses her husband. Then she loses both of her sons before they've had any kids. So she, and so she's got no grandchildren and she's in a foreign land. I think it's in this moment you'll see uh, that that was when Naomi decided it's time to head home. I'm going to head home. Because everything in Moab reminded her of her loss. Everywhere she looked reminded her of what had been taken away. And so, so she begins this journey um, of heading back to Israel. But here's, here's something to look at. There it is on the screen. Whatever hardship Naomi thought she was running from in Israel did not come close to the hardship that she ran into in Moab. You know, whatever she thought she needed to get away from in Israel, however bad she thought it was going to get, whatever she had to run from, didn't come close to the hardship, the loss, what happened for her in Moab. What's the principle? In the midst of difficulty, don't run. Because the temp temptation is to run. Who's been there? You know, oh, it's getting tough. Well, maybe the best thing to do is we've just got to get out of here. We've got to go somewhere else. We've got to find, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. We've got to go. In the midst of difficulty, don't run. Trust God where he's placed you. Trust God where he's uh, positioned you. Be thankful where you are. Don't be tempted to run in the midst of difficulty. The grass is not always greener on the other side. Uh, now, we know that God works all things out for good, and this is a great story. As, as you go through the book of Ruth, you'll see how God does work things out for good. But Naomi, the point is that Naomi could have avoided so much hardship, so much pain, so much loss, if she'd stayed in Israel, if she'd stayed in the promised land. Naomi left. With her two daughters, they begin the journey back to Israel. And, uh, and along the way, they take a pause. And there is this conversation between her and her two daughters-in-law. Verse 8 and 9, it says this. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud. Verse 14 says, Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Ruth loved her mother-in-law. Orpah says goodbye. She goes back home to her mother, to her people. But Ruth clings tightly to Naomi. She saw something in her. Something, there was, there was character, there was strength in this woman. There was something about her, her God and her people that she wanted to stay with her. I'm not going anywhere. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. So Naomi and Ruth begin this journey back to Israel. And Naomi returns to the promised land empty in so many ways. You know, she's, she's, she's empty. Her family has been stripped away. Her possessions... She went away full. She's nothing left. A sense of belonging. And now here she is, empty. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Home for Naomi was the promised land. When we think about home in a spiritual sense for you and I today, home is, is that moment where, where someone would come into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's home. 
when we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, that is coming home. And we talk about coming home, finding Jesus, finding a relationship with God. It's a great moment when someone comes home. Um, home can also be about our spiritual home, the place where we, we belong, the, the, the spiritual family we're a part of. That's home, being home. It's a place where we, we know the inner peace of God, that we're in the right place. That's home. The, the New Testament equivalent to this story, uh, I think, would be the story of the prodigal son. If we think about going away full and arriving back empty, well, that was the prodigal son. Who knows that story? Prodigal son, you heard that one? So he, he leaves, uh, he takes his father's inheritance and he goes away and he is full. He is overflowing. He's got an abundance and he goes out and little by little, it is all stripped away, uh, taken from him or, or he squanders it. And then he comes to the point when he's with the pigs, he's feeling pretty empty, feeling desperate. And in his emptiness, he decides it's time to go home. It's time to go back to the father to head home. And that's what he does. He returns home um, empty, just like Naomi. But here's the thing that I want to say is that when we are full, we think we know best. Yeah? When we are full, we've got options. You know, we, we know best. We don't need God. You know, here's Naomi. She's full. She knows best. We've got we to gotta leave Israel. We've got to go to Moab. Prodigal son, he knows best. He's got to go leave the father and go and do some other things. When we are full, we, we think we know best. And, and sometimes um, that can get us into trouble. When we are full, we don't think that we need God. I was, I was preparing this. I remembered a, a, a conversation with someone, and, and this isn't a unique thing. I think this is quite prevalent in, in our culture, um, having this conversation about God with this person. And, and they're saying that, um, you know, they said, well, I don't need God. I don't need God. You know, I've got... Uh, family life is good. Um, I'm about to start a new job, you know, and I'm going to be, you know, it's going to be good. I'm going to be earning some good money. And, uh, you know, and I've got plans. I've got, I've got dreams moving forward. And, they, and, and this person said, God just doesn't fit in this picture. God just doesn't fit in this picture. And, you know, this is the reality um, for a lot of people. When we are full, we don't need God. And it's not until we get to that place of emptiness. Emptiness will bring us home. Uh, you know, some questions that I, I think we've got to ask. You know, what does God have to do for people to, to come home? What does God have to strip away for them to find Him? What, how empty do people have to become before they turn to Jesus? For Naomi, for the prodigal son, for both of them, emptiness brought them home. In our emptiness, we will find him. In our emptiness, we will find him. I want to um, uh, just have a look at one final verse here from the story as we see this picture of uh, Naomi and, and her daughter-in-law, Ruth, arriving in the land, a sense of emptiness. Um, it's, it was emptiness that positioned Naomi for blessing. It's a real key part of the story because everything is about to turn. She went away full. She arrives empty. It was the emptiness that positioned her for God's blessing. Look at verse 22. It says, So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Well, that's good timing, isn't it? Just as the barley harvest is about to start, just as God's hand of blessing is about to be released on His people, all of a sudden there is Naomi arriving back in the land, motivated by her emptiness, motivated by that place of need. She comes into the land in time for God's favour, His blessing. It was emptiness that positioned her for blessing. I know when I think about these last two years, um, I don't know if there's anyone else in the room who, who, when you began 2020, who went into 2020 feeling full, feeling, you know, like this is going to be a good year. Um, I'll tell you, man, I, we, we had plans. 
where the things that were going to be happening in 2020, it was, uh, we were full. We went into 2020 feeling full. The leadership, you know, we, the church, we had some, some big things. And I remember sitting in the lounge, you probably remember the moment as well in, in your place, in, in January 2020, sitting in the lounge, turning on the TV, and there it is, is this virus that's in China. And thinking, you know, my thoughts were, well, you know, it's never, it's never going to get to New Zealand. They'll contain that. We'll be fine. We'll, we'll, we'll just carry on um, over here in little old New Zealand. And, and so we went, we went into 2024. But as we journeyed through the last two years, and as we've come into 2022, there is a sense that, that things have been stripped away. Things have been taken. There is a level of emptiness. Uh, we could all share our story, couldn't we, of, of these last two years. You know, emptiness, you know. Uh, sense it might be it might be to do with finances to do with business feeling a little empty this year coming to this year it might be to do with relationships relationships have been strained there's been pressure there's been the sense of you know these last two years have taken their toll spiritually emotionally mentally for sure mentally people feeling drained empty and you know, the best thing to do in that moment is, is to hear the Father saying, come home. You know, come to me. I like this picture of um, just Naomi arriving back in the land, feeling empty, but she's about to step into the season of blessing, the barley harvest. So, so one season ends. And a new one begins. It's a season of God's blessing upon her as she postures herself, as she recognises her emptiness and comes home. She arrives in time for the blessing.